Hey guys, welcome back to Ace Recaps. Today I'm going to be explaining a 2020 Hindi horror mystery film titled Bulbul. Bul. The story begins in 1881, where we watch a wealthy family welcome home a young prince and his brothers. Their daughter Bulbul Bul is all dolled up and shown to him. The prince is happy looking at the little girl and approves of the wedding. The marriage rituals are completed, and Bulbul Bul is then sent to her husband's home. On the way, the girl awakens in a carriage and starts to panic without her parents. So, to calm her down, the prince tells her a story about a witch who lived deep in the forest. Her feet were twisted all the way around, and she would wait every night for the blood of a princess so that she could turn into a human. On her first night, as she waits for her husband, Mahendra, one of the prince's disabled brothers, comes in and starts to touch her. Well hello to you too, sir. Love a bit of uninvited groping on the first night of marriage. Luckily, the oldest brother, the king, Indranil, walks in just in time and stops him from doing so. His wife Binodini comes in and takes him away. When Bulbul asks for the little prince, Indranil explains to her that she's mistaken as he's her husband, making her the queen. Twenty years later, the little prince Satya is all grown up now and is on his way back to his palace. The moon is blood red, and the carriage driver warns him about the witch that's been killing people in the forest, but Satya just laughs it off. A few hours later, as he falls asleep, the carriage driver steps down to move the log blocking the road. The witch shows herself by hanging upside down off a tree, but when Satya wakes up, she disappears. At the palace, the maid set up his bed, and as he sleeps, the witch looks over him from the shadows. Early next morning, Satya finally meets Bulbul after five long years. She is now the head of the palace and takes care of her loyal subjects as her husband left home a few years ago and never returned. The both of them recall the time they spent together as kids, playing and running around the garden. Satya claims to have written letters to the family almost every day, but he never got a reply. He is curious as to why his brother left home, but Bulbul has no words. Ah, the timeless art of ghosting, royal edition. They go to visit Binodini, who now lives in a widow's ashram. Indian tradition suggests women who lose their husband shave their head and wear white saris for the remainder of their lives. When Satya approaches her, she claims that on the day of the festival, the witch killed her husband. Bulbul, on the other hand, doesn't believe in these tales. According to her, even if people die by an accident or a fever, the villagers say that the witch killed them. Satya is also skeptical and says that it must have been an animal attack, but Binodini swears to have seen twisted footprints on the floor. Satya urges her to come live in the palace, and the two leave. On their way back, they recall the time they spent together as kids. They often shared eerie tales with each other. One night, Binodini entered the room and informed the young queen that her husband was calling for her. When Bulbul inquired about the reason, Binodini professed ignorance, expressing her own desire for the king's attention, suggesting a hint of jealousy. She even remarked that it was apparent Bulbul only had eyes for Satya. In the present, Bulbul tells him about the tale of the witch that only comes out at night, so the prince decides to hunt down the animal causing the disturbance in his village. As he prepares for the hunt, he runs into Dr. Sudip, who's taking care of Bulbul. He immediately packs up his stuff and takes his leave, leaving Satya suspicious of both of them. As Satya goes around the forest along with a few villagers, one of them gets separated from the group due to the dense fog. He spots a woman call out to him but realizes it's the witch and tries to run away. Satya soon hears screams and chases the noise. Dr. Sudip, who also stays close by, runs into the forest to help the person in need. He spots the woman in an abandoned building and follows her, but she disappears into thin air. Satya soon reaches the location, and they see the villager hanging upside down a tree. Sudip claims he did not see anyone else there, and Satya now thinks that it isn't an animal but a man. He even suspects Sudip as he was the first one there even though he wasn't part of the hunting party. The next morning, Satya explains the situation to Bulbul, Bul, but she doesn't seem surprised. Binodini shows up to the palace and decides to continue living there as Bulbul Bul is all alone. She starts being her usual condescending self, and Bulbul Bul recalls the time she did the same when her family did not offer enough gold as dowry. In the next scene, we watch the villagers mourn the death of their loved one. As the police aren't willing to put in efforts to investigate the case, Satya decides to take it upon himself. He walks around the forest and spots a bloody handprint on the wall. He approaches Binodini and asks her about the doctor, but the woman adds some more fuel to the fire by claiming he visits Bulbul Bul very often. In a flashback, we watch as Mahendra tries to make a move on Bulbul Bul in the garden. The king stops him and adores his wife, making Binodini jealous of his love and affection. She suggests that they get Satya married soon, making innocent Bulbul Bul jittery as she fears losing her best friend. Looking at this, the king starts to doubt his wife and brother. Later that day, when the king asks Bulbul Bul about her opinion on Satya's wedding, she starts acting up again, confirming his suspicion. When she approaches Satya about the wedding, 
he promises her he'll never get married, making her smile. Looking at them together makes the king angry, and by noting he urges him to look into the matter before it's too late. Because nothing says relationship expert like meddling in other people's love lives. Clearly, she is the Dr. Phil of the 19th century. That night, the king sits the two of them down and tells his brother that he's arranged for him to move to London in a few months so he can pursue his studies. Listening to this, Satya is overjoyed that he gets to roam the world, but the young Bulbul is heartbroken. She meets him later that night and in tears begs him not to go as she'd be all alone in the palace with no one to talk to, but Satya is adamant on moving and promises to write to her every day. The king observes their meeting from his room and questions Bulbul about it when she gets back. In a fit of anger, he decides to take Satya to the main city to get his documents ready. Every day she writes in her diary and waits by her window for Satya to return. As a few weeks go by, the king returns back home, but Satya isn't with him as he's already moved to London. Heartbroken, Bulbul pulls apart her diary and lights it on fire. By Nodini tries to make her move on the king, but he just ignores her. When he gets back to his room, he spots her diary in the fireplace and notices Satya's name written there. As Bulbul relaxes in a tub, the king walks up to her in a fit of rage and throws her to the ground. He continues to beat her on her feet with a metal rod until she passes out. The next day, Dr. Sudip stitches up her wound, but the poor girl has gone into a coma. The king tells the doctor she fell down the stairs and proceeds to leave the palace as he has nothing left for him there. That night, Bulbul has a nightmare and wakes up in pain, shocked to see her legs in a cast. In the present, Satya wakes up to hear the news that an elderly man was killed in his bathtub. There was only one witness, an eight-year-old girl who claims that it was the witch who killed the man. That night, Bul Bul and Dr. Sudip share a joint and talk about life. Satya notices this from afar and believes that the queen is cheating on the king. He approaches Bul Bul and tells her that it's better she leaves the palace and moves back in with her parents, as it's insulting if the kingdom comes to know of her affair, but she just laughs it off. Bul Bul then recalls her past. One night, when her legs were strapped to the bed and she was unable to move, Mahendra approaches her. He plays around her bed, and Bulbul screams in pain. As there was no one there to protect her from him, he continues to force himself on her. He holds down her mouth to stop her from screaming and in the process suffocates her, and she passes away. Once done, Mahendra tries to wake her up, but in vain. He panics and runs back to his room. The goddess protecting the village then possesses the deceased woman and brings her back to life. Hearing her screams, Binodini figures out what happened. Nothing like a little suffocation to spice up a romantic night who says chivalry is dead. Early next morning, Bulbul seems to be a changed person. Her skin is now glowing, and she isn't in pain anymore. Binodini cleans her up and begs her not to utter a word of the events of the previous night. When Dr. Sudip comes for the checkup, he's shocked looking at all the blood, but Bulbul doesn't tell him what happened. In the present, the village celebrates a grand festival worshipping the goddess. A young boy walks up to the queen and explains to her how his father drowned his mother. On the other hand, Satya is so sure that the doctor is the murderer and takes him to the city to get him tried in front of the court. Just then the carriage stops moving and he sees that the driver has been murdered. He spots a woman and shoots at her, chasing her into the forest. When Sudip walks out, he spots Bulbul in her true form, with her twisted legs. He recalls the time he helped her with her feet. They healed very fast, and she could twist her legs around, but the doctor didn't think much of this. It is revealed that she got shot by Satya and is now injured. Satya sets the doctor free as there's enough proof that he isn't the murderer. He sets out in the forest to look for the real culprit, and Sudip tries to stop him. During the struggle, Satya ends up lighting the entire forest on fire. Bulbul tries escaping the fire by jumping through the branches of the tree but is unable to keep up due to the gunshot wound. The truth is finally revealed. Bulbul killed the old man because he was about to force himself on the child. She killed the villager because he broke his wife's bones. And she even killed Mahendra because of what he did to her. The witch was never evil but a goddess trying to protect her people from the evil wrath of men. Unfortunately, the goddess having no place to hide, perishes in the fire. When Satya comes to know the truth, he is heartbroken that he just killed his best friend. He screams in horror recalling their time spent together. A year later, the king returns back home. The palace is now abandoned, and nobody lives in the village anymore. He reads a letter from his younger brother claiming he never wants to be like him and promises never to return back. As the king rests for the night, he is woken by a fiery ash that turns into Bulbul, bull, marking the end of the evil king. That's all folks, thank you for watching, if you like the video please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a great day.